Why hello there, wherever you may be. This is the Agassino Zynga Show, episode number 490, with me, your host, Agassino Zynga. This is episode number 490, with me, your host, Agassino. How you feeling? How you doing? Amazing. Great to know. Great to hear. If it's your first time tuning into a show via YouTube, welcome. Great to have you. I'm happy you're here. Make sure you smash that like, hit subscribe, and leave your comment down below. And if you're listening via the podcast app, wherever you may be, on your travels, out and about, going to meet somebody, going to, you know, link someone, <laughs> you know, <laughs> make sure you leave me a five star review. Don't delay. It only take you a couple of minutes. Leave me a five star review. Help me get up the algorithm. Let people know that this show is informative, entertaining, and somewhat joyous to listen to by leaving me a review. And I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. I can't give you nothing, right? If you want me to give you a pat on the bank or a little, a little tug, I will. Just you know, email me. But I can't give you anything right now. Make sure you leave me a five star review, and I'll be eternally. eternally only grateful also support via patreon is also more than welcome bonus episode is going to be out this week on the patreon so make sure you jump on there the patreon is only one dollar the equivalent of one pound per week or oh, no sorry per month actually isn't it? it's per month yes yeah, insane it's as little as one pound per month you can subscribe to the patreon and get access to all my bonus content only available for pension subscribers so make sure you jump on there and don't delay on that decision get involved over there today Anyway, here we are back again. Hope you're good. Episode number 490. We're rattling through the numbers now, trying to get as many as these shows out as I can per week. I'm trying to do three. I want to ramp up to do four because guess what? I have a lot to talk about and I like to talk about these things on the podcast because that's what those things are invented for. So happy to have you here with me, you know, listening to the stuff I've talked about because where else would I be talking about this stuff if I didn't have you? Right, I don't have any real friends. I don't really hang around with people. I'm a bit of a hermit in that way. I'm a bit of an introverted extrovert in that way. Right, I like to go out and have a good time and get <gasps> sloshed, but I also like to stay on my own for a prolonged period of time. Right, for a very long stretch of time, I like to avoid all in any contact, and I've been like that for a while. It's just one of my um, weird character traits i guess that i just haven't been able to shake off evolve from or grow out of and to be completely honest i don't want to i think you get to a certain age you get to a certain point in your life where you start to kind of lean into who you actually are and you stop trying to change yourself and stop trying to um, edit the things that you think society keeps telling you you shouldn't be doing or you shouldn't be acting like and just start to think you know what I might not be perfect. I might not be the way that I would envision myself to be or the dream way I'd like to be, but this is the best I'm going to do for now because there's no real turning back. You know, I've had many years of experience. I've had many touch points, many relationships, many friendships, uh, many people I've met along the way. If those one, if those monumental shifts in people that weren't able to change me, it's very unlikely somebody's harsh words or introspective words or words of encouragement are going to change me. It's not really, which is why I kind of avoid again this is a tangent but which is why i generally avoid giving advice a lot of people would you know at, at, at the time when i was more social people would ask me for advice for things like how to do this how to do that how to be so driven and all this kind of stuff and i'd be like i don't know man Every, everyone's just got a thing in it everyone's got a thing you have to lean into that thing and it is what it is and usually i would always say mostly along the lines of like you know if it really matters to you you'll do it you know what I mean, it's not really a, a factor of like finding out what hack works best and what routine should I sleep at two or should I sleep at nine? It doesn't really matter if you care enough about the thing that you're trying to do or the dream that you're trying to accomplish or the place you're trying to be at or the career you're trying to get, whatever it is, I don't care, right? Just even the holidays, you'll figure it out, right? If you want to go to Ibiza and you really, really want to go and you've seen too many pictures of people enjoying themselves on social and you've got in too much FOMO and you want to be there for yourself, you're going to do everything. It's possible to make sure that happens whether you're working at mcdonald's or you're working in an office job you're going to figure out a way to save that money to go over there now you might be broke after the fact and you might regret going there and you might figure out when you get there it's not as good as the pictures but it doesn't matter you're going to figure out a way to get there if it really matters to you as much as it does so sometimes advice in for me in general i feel like it's wasted i think if so i think it waste. i think it's a waste of time i think it kind of just if anything it's good it's good for the ears it's good for the brain to have somebody kind of really reaffirming things that you already know but for the most part you know real action real change um you know real 360 or no real 180 kind of um changes in terms of your personality and how you approach things and maybe your character and your attitude that people don't like usually come at you usually come 
when you decide it doesn't really come when people kind of sit around you and give you a scolding or have an intervention not really even interventions they kind of go a long way in terms of pushing you the right direction but you still have to make the decision you still have to decide okay cool whatever i'm doing is disruptive enough to make all these people around me so concerned that they're at their last tether and they're letting me know now if i don't sort my stuff out then they're all going to seriously abandon me and these are the people that i've got in my life cool and then you have to still make the decision to be like you know what i'm going to put down this meth i'm going to put down whatever i'm going to put down in order to make sure that i keep these people who i love in my, in my life and that's again a decision that you make on your own so you know I'm, I'm i'm becoming a fully actualized version of myself i have my flaws i have a lot of them a lot of flaws um a lot of shortcomings a lot of things that i wish i could change about myself but unfortunately it's just the way that i am and i would much rather spend more time trying to um maximize my good points my great character traits as opposed to focusing on the stuff that is somewhat negative but also something that's part of my character you know what i mean it's one of those kind of weird things it's like kanye right you don't get kanye without you know the possessive you know the the incessant desire to piss people off it just is what it is yeah you just have to kind of take it if you want that guy you just can't strip that part of, of him out of him even if he is a born again christian he still has to be that dude so you have to decide as a listener as a viewer as a fan of the clothes as a fan of the fashion as a fan of the sorry as a fan of the shoes do I want to support this guy if he consistently keeps pressing my buttons, especially at the back of all that Trump stuff, which I'm going to get onto later because there's a really interesting article about that in the Washington Post that made me really think because there's been a lot of kickback, especially from my video that I uploaded or the clip that I uploaded on my YouTube channel um, taken from the podcast episode yesterday where I basically said the Kanye West album was really impressive. I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. Um, I really can't understand how people can listen to that album and think it's not good music. I think people's ears are weird um but again that's what i love about music i love how subjective it is someone could listen to an album and legitimately say this is horrible music i'm like how can you listen to remote control with sorry with them kanye young fuck and say that doesn't sound good i mean hurricane with little baby in the weekend that's not good music to you it's uh i don't know but regardless there's a really good article on the washington post that speaks about this um and if anything it sort of delves into this not delves into maybe it touches a point it touches upon more so um the damage maybe that Kanye had done with his flirtations with Donald Trump and you know Tim telling calling him his dad and stuff um for some people it was just it was just it was just too much to kind of ignore and now that he's out here trying to promote an album and he's kind of you know um delayed it on purpose and done these really extravagant big highfalutin sort of listening parties that are essentially turned into a avenue for him to just drum up more income and more sales for his merch line and grossly overcharge people for chicken codgeons and whatever maybe people just had enough right so i think and i mentioned this before i remember they mentioning before on another podcast episode that i reckon that all this stuff is going to end up kicking him in the back because it's not as if this is the kanye from pre-trump this is the this is the post trump kanye right or the one that we know who kind of obviously felt like he had a chance of obviously also being the president of the united states and somebody who referred to trump as his dad in it because he never grew up with a dad which is just what insane to think right it's really insane to kind of think about but for the american people out there i think because trump was such a divisive figure it's very difficult to forgive somebody who publicly states that they're fans of him which i don't really understand i don't really think i don't really get how somebody can be elected the prime minister or the president sorry prime minister the president of the united states and you're not allowed to say you're a fan of him because people are then gonna blacklist you and not be your friend but isn't there a realization that Obviously, some people voted for him. This is why he's in the flipping White House, and which is why you know eventually he ended up not serving a second term because, you know, not enough people I guess voted for him to keep him in that seat. You would assume, you know, there is other theories out there, but let's not go down that road. It's just an interesting place to be in it where you're a very successful hip hop artist in Kanye West. You've obviously had a career where you've purposely pressed people's buttons in order to gauge a reaction. You weaponize your fan base consistently. He's done it a year, you know, he's done it for decades since the beginning of his career. It's kind of his thing that he does. And just this time around, you do it with the wrong person. You align yourself or you back yourself with the quote, quote, the, who the public would say is the wrong person. And that essentially leads to your album not being received as well as it should be because people just can't let go of that image of you hugging Trump, you know, as he's sitting behind his desk and stuff, showing him what images of a, what was he showing him? Images of like a SpaceX star, um, starship or something, right? Was he showing him that? 
or something else that came out, some sort of technology stuff that came out recently. At that time, sorry, he was showing um, Donald Trump on his phone. Like a bizarre, bizarre, bizarre human being in that presidential run where it felt like people felt like Kanye was purposely trying to, you know, get people, get, get the votes to swing in Trump's favor. I don't know, man. That guy is a legend. I love him. As an artist, I love him. I think to be at that level and just to troll and to still be such a brat, like bratty in that kind of way that he acts and to clearly try to manipulate your fan base into doing things that might set the course of American history back in you know, many, many years is absolutely hilarious to me. I don't know why. It just is like that idea that somebody at that level is pissing so many people off just makes me laugh to no end. But hey, I will touch on that later. I'll touch on that later. First off, um, first things first, confirmation has been made now courtesy of Christian Ronaldo's Instagram page and also these amazing pictures that I found on Twitter courtesy of United Report with Christian Ronaldo, you know, donning, redonning the Man United jersey, the new Man United jersey. Christian Ronaldo is back. He's back in red. And um, it's incredible to see. Again, like I mentioned in the live stream that I did the other day, I was more worried that he's going to go to City as opposed to, you know, worried about, you know, anxious about him coming to United. I didn't really think we had a chance of signing him. I, I just assumed with this cultural reset and the way we're trying to go as a club, it just didn't make sense for us to sign a 36-year-old Cristiano Ronaldo. It'd make more sense to maybe, you know, save that money and maybe try and put that into the budget of signing a Haaland next year or whoever else you want to go sign. But pinning your hopes for a title challenge this season or next season on the back of Cristiano Ronaldo at phase six seems a little bit foolhardy. Right? Especially when you look at the squad, especially when you look at the coaching staff, especially when you look at how we play football, it just didn't seem like the most logical decision to do. But you know, thank God I don't run, I'm not part of any decision making process there at United because, in terms of feel good factor, in terms of lifting the mood, in terms of, again, weirdly enough, lifting the expectations, signing Ronaldo was probably a masterstroke for whoever decided to go for him when City, you know, when the word got out of the city, were trying to wrap up that deal. Because what this does is that. Without, you know, any shadow of a doubt, this is the signing that is definitely going to make people think, okay, cool, United should be challenging for the trophy, should be challenging for trophies this season, at the very least challenging for the league. No one's saying we should be winning it outright, you know, with 10 points to spare at the end of the season. No, but we should be there and thereabouts with the team that we have. If we end up finishing third or fourth and stuff, it's just going to be un unacceptable, no matter what kind of season the other teams have. Unless the other teams have, like, a season where they only lose, like, three games or two games, right? Then you've got to say, okay, cool, this was a fairly stacked season and everyone came out of their A game which you think might happen because Liverpool look incredibly strong Chelsea look really good um, City are also going to do City they're going to spank a few teams 5-0 along the way so I don't know man it's going to be tough I, I've said it before previously which is a weird thing to say because again I'm not the biggest Oli Gunnar Solskjaer fan I still think he's a fairly mediocre coach and I think once he ends up leaving United we'll definitely see what his actual level is similar with David Moyes a lot of people think he was got unfairly treated and then he ended up having a little bit of a a little bit of a madness when he left United in terms of his career he went up down sideways and then eventually kind of stabilised himself obviously at West Ham but I think we're going to see where Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is legitimately in terms of how he's regarded in the football world in terms of the managers that are out there because you assume if you're a coach of United or manager of United once you leave you should have the option to go to any club in the world right really you know especially if they've had you especially if, if they've got a vacancy you should be able to put your application in and be you know seriously considered for that role but I think we're going to see with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer especially with the, the second the team that he manages after United it's going to be a little bit dicey. So, but yeah, that aside, I'm interested to see the experiment. Obviously, I'm interested to see if this experiment can actually work, whether or not you can win a league title or challenge for, no, let's say, league title is it, or challenge for multiple trophies. Let's not say single trophies because we've seen what Roberto Di Matteo obviously did at Chelsea when he won the Champions League that season. But I'm interested to see this experiment. Can you win league titles or challenge for league titles and win multiple trophies in a season or maybe a couple of seasons with a fairly average, mediocre, let's say, run-of-the-mill coaching staff but excellent world-class players is that possible because you know no one's saying you know RB Leipzig and flipping Borussia Dortmund aren't going to beat down our door for you know Michael Carrick and flipping 
you know, uh, what do you call it, Mike Phelan, you know what I mean, they're not, let's just call a spade a spade, these guys are all, you know, all things with Jiggy McKenna, these guys are fairly mediocre, run of the mill guys who will probably end up going back into some, you know, youth-based football when it comes, when they end up leaving United, whether or not it's at United or somewhere else, so I'm interested to see if that experiment's going to work, I really am, and I'm interested to see whether or not Ronaldo experiment will work too, can we, because the problem that we have, I think it was the other day, against Wolves, Edison Cavani touched the ball 13 times, I think, when I saw some stats somewhere. Something insane. No, he didn't touch the ball at all, actually, in the box. Let me, let me rewind that. I saw a stat somewhere that said Edison Cavani didn't touch the ball at all in the box when he came on for United against Wolves. Now, don't get me wrong. That game was a bit frantic. Wolves are a very, you know, difficult team to play against. Um, they've got a lot of quality. They make things awkward. Um, they're just a bit, a bit of a nuisance team, right? They're sort of like a a better version of Burnley, right, in that way. They just, you know, when you know you're gonna when you go when you go to play Wolves, you know you're gonna be in for a proper football match, right? It's gonna be a lot of, you know, um a lot of aggression. There's gonna be a lot of, you know, counter attacking football, a lot of direct football, um, just a lot of pressing, like just, you know, they just make you uncomfortable. So maybe if you're just Cavani, it's probably not the best game for you to come on as a sub because there's not a lot of space for him to move into, run into. So it's no surprise he didn't touch the ball, but still, it's super concerning. Edson Cavani came on, I think, if I'm not mistaken, around the 60th minute or something or 70th. Plenty of time to make an impression. And he didn't touch the ball once in the box. That's an issue. So for all the people out there criticizing people like Marsha, who I think you know should get greatly criticized, especially considering how Edson Cavani finished or played in the middle this kind of of last season and obviously Marshall hasn't really stepped up even though you know he's been out for a while I think it's been like six months or so he's been out of football so that might explain his rustiness but for everybody that complains about Marshall, I think we're going to be in for a big shock when we see how isolated Ronaldo will be playing up front and the lack of chances that he'll get but again the difference is because he's a genuine world-class player he's going to be able to make more out of scraps than other players will be right it's just it's what it is he's going to be able to get a ball that wasn't maybe intended for him pick it up and swivel and be able to bury it top corner right those are just the things that you can do when you're Cristiano Ronaldo um, and you've got the Midas touch so that could work but whether or not we can sustain that sort of you know football and that sort of performances week on week out I just don't think it's possible I don't think it's viable the first half of you know against Wolves and the majority of that game was terrible we got essentially outplayed and if Wolves had better quality they probably should have won by two goals or something right but in the end our star boy Mason Greenwood pops up and we win the game so I'm interested to see can Ronaldo change it can Ronaldo affect this and again I think in general he's just his influence around the team his influence with some of the younger players his influence with up you know um, just in the club overall will definitely rub off and I think this will be one of those kind of lever art everlasting afterglows sort of like when you know Zatan was at United um, that period right he kind of raised the professionalism a little bit raised the competitive level a little bit similar with obviously Bruno Fernandes when he first signed um, those players have that ability to sort of raise the frequency and I think we're going to see that obviously from Ronaldo and of course you know you know, all the memories that we hold dear with Ronaldo. Like, look at that, man. You want me? You want a grown man to cry when I say a picture of Ronaldo looking at that? I do honestly want a grown man to cry because I will. I'll cry on stream. I'll cry and record. Sorry, I'll cry and record this podcast. I really will. So, yeah, I can't wait to see the guy, man. And he made a perfect, perfect, perfect Instagram post, which says the following in his caption. It says, everyone who knows me knows about my nerve. Sorry, my, my never ending love for Manchester United. The years I spent at this club were absolutely amazing. And the path we've been made together is written in the gold letters in the history of this great, great, amazing institution. I, I can't even start to explain my feelings right now. As I see my return to Old Trafford announced worldwide, it's like a dream come true. After all the times I went back to play against Man United, and even as an opponent, to always have felt such love and respect from the supporters in this stance. Especially even after he in, takes off his top and celebrates in front of our fans, in it. But you know, we'll forget that. Um, this is absolutely 100% the stuff the dreams are made of. My first domestic league, my first cup, my first quarter Portuguese national team, my first Champions League, my first golden boot, my first Ballon d'Or. Oh, God, he's so good. <laughs> they were all born from the special connection between me and the Red Devils. History has been written and the past is history will be written once again. You have my word. Yo, he's coming in hungry. He's coming in hungry. He's like, we are going to win something by hook or crook. He says, I'm right here. I'm back where I belong. Let's make it ha happen once again. P.S. Sir Alex, this one's for you. That is pure goosebumps inducing. This one's for you, Sir Alex. Are you insane? What are you trying to do? You're trying to get me in my feels. 
you trying to get me have you trying to make me have a boner is that what you want us to do because you've achieved it let me tell you that you've bloody achieved it oh my god man i can't wait I honestly can't wait to see him back. It's just like, it's just not fair, isn't it? It really isn't fair. We've got one of the world's, well, one of um, the world's best players playing for us again. Again, destroying the team. Can we get the ball up to him? Can we create more chances? Can we defend the, you know, can we have a midfield that is cohesive and is able to build up attacks from the back? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Questions for another day. But Ronaldo's back. Ronaldo is back. Oh, I can't wait. I really can't, man. It's going to be fucking amazing when he ends up putting on the jersey. I'm going to be over the moon. Next, we touch upon this because why not? This is important news for all my clubbing man them out there. So the Berlin Club Commission have just announced, just confirmed, um, you know, to rapturous applause and everyone going absolutely insane in the comments, especially for the people I follow. Everyone's going nuts. But it's been confirmed here, courtesy of the Berlin Club Commission, that Berlin will be able to reopen clubs indoors from this weekend onwards. So if you're in Berlin right now and you're kind of itching for a rave and you're fed up of going to the open airs, especially with all these other amazing places, unfortunately closing down, like Suicide Club obviously had um, that unfortunate incident a few weeks ago where that young lady passed away um, from a drug overdose or something. Suppose I've been told, I'm not too sure. Also, suppose I've read, I'm not too sure of the details. Don't hold me to it, but that happened. Of course, you've got the thing that happened with Grishmüller or the new um, River Sudust that happened obviously a few weeks ago. They had an incident, so they've been kind of closed for temporary i'm not sure what's happening with else club at the moment but I, they've not really opened at all this summer so there's a lot of places that are having to close the weather's obviously getting much colder and in general anyway you know the best way to experience the clubs in berlin is to experience them indoors so without that possibility it's been a bit of a i'd imagine it's been a bit of a weird feeling around the city so to have this news come especially before the weekend must be incredible so for everybody out there living there and enjoying there hopefully you're able to make out there in the clubs and hopefully this kind of goes through there's no little last minute speed humps but this is the post here courtesy of the Berlin Club Commission it says the following the Berlin Senate decided today to open the club's interiors for recovered and vaccinated people there is no mask requirement or capacity cap it will likely go into effect Friday night so likely no real confirmation just yet the proposal of the club commission to offer an option with PCR tests was unfortunately not approved which is an interesting development interesting um, way to go about things so Obviously, in the UK, things are different. Obviously, in the UK, you can go to events with a lateral throw test and you'll be permitted to go indoors. You don't have to show a negative, um, you know, don't have to show that you've been vaccinated. But it's obviously dependent on the event. I guess some events, because maybe they can't cover the insurance or they have insurance, I'm not too sure, they require you to have a vaccine passport. And some just require you to have, a, obviously, lateral flow test, which is obviously free at the moment now with the British government. Obviously, later on down the line, it probably will end up being charged. But it's not going to be anywhere near what a PCR test costs you in the UK. I think a PCR test in the UK costs anywhere between like 100 pounds plus right i think in mainland europe they might be a little bit cheaper i've heard people say something around 50 euros maybe less and obviously pcr tests are way more accurate in terms of you know giving you if what well, they're way more accurate in terms of diagnosing whether or not you have covid or not whereas the lateral flow tests are a little bit more of a it feels like this it's just a little bit more of a you know, say the gimmick, but it's a little bit more of a, it's performative, right? It's not exactly a bona fide um, way for you to test or to make sure that you haven't got COVID. But this approach of no vaccine, no entry, must be interesting for a place like Berlin, especially people that are non-conformist who kind of want to go against the grain. Um, I would assume there is probably a large amount of people within the clubbing space who have decided not to get the vaccine for whatever reason, right? Some of them through health, some of them through skepticism. It doesn't really matter at this moment. So they're put in a really awkward position where they're going to have to reconcile with, do I want to go out? Do I want to go out and kind of mark this? No, not mark it. But yeah, it's kind of like marking it, right? Going out, because I felt like that when I went out this weekend, this weekend just gone. There's something about being able to go indoors of a club, especially if you enjoy doing that kind of thing, that sort of feels like you are regaining some of your freedoms it sounds a bit cringe it sounds a bit weird but it does it feels like you're somehow getting back to some semblance of normality because you know holidays aren't really what they are previously because you still have to spend what 300 pounds 300 euros before you leave on test and whatnot yeah it's just a lot of money in order to go a lot of things you have to kind of figure out in your head a lot of logistics you have to kind of plan you can't just book a ticket with Ryanair and obviously hop to another country we understand we're living in a pandemic 
but one of the great things about coming out of the pandemic are these little avenues and little areas of the industry or the world in general that open up that kind of give you hope for the future and i think going back to clubs and being able to do that sort of thing similar with people that go back to football stadiums is somewhat a little bit of an indication of it so those people who are obviously anti-vax are going to be put in a really odd predicament because at one point as you know on one end you've got a valid reason why you don't want to have the vaccine but on the other end your life is your like your your kind of um value or not value your uh your sort of um ability to have fun and to live somewhat of an enjoyable life is somewhat diminished because you're not able to actualize that bit right you're not able to enjoy that bit of your life with the clubbing section of it um I think if you're a DJ, you probably just have to get the, the vaccine. It just is what it is for the job that you're doing and where you're going to be hanging around people, flying different countries. Just be responsible. You're just going to have to get it done. Even if you are skeptical, just one of the things you have to kind of bite the bullet and maybe put your principles and morals to one side. It sucks, but I guess it is what it is. But I'm interested to know what people over there are think about this, like the no vaccine, no entry thing, because I'm sure it's going to ruffle some feathers. I'm sure it is. Um, some of the comments here, let's read them through, see what people are saying on the comments of the page. It says, this does not make sense. So someone called Lyra Primuk. Is it? Hey, is that the person there? It doesn't matter yet, there you go. Um, she says the following, this does not make any sense. Vaccinated people are getting breakthrough COVID all over the world right now. What's the point of opening if mass infections happen, if clubs and then the government blames nightlife? I don't think that's going to happen personally. Um, from what we've seen, the German government have been maybe more cautious and slow in terms of reopening parts of the economy than the British government or than the yeah, British government have been in general. They've taken a real slow approach. And if they've come to a point where they generally think that you can reopen clubs now, it's probably because you know they looked at numbers and like you know this is the safest moment this, if we wait any longer things may change and you know again the premise around if you have, don't have a vaccine you can't get in i think might lead to a real spike in people going out and getting vaccines because you know if we're heading into the winter months the last thing anybody wants is to be standing in an open air somewhere with no ability to go indoors at a club somewhere in berlin i would imagine right because the winters there are absolutely brutal it continues it says here let's go read some more comments it's here more people kind of not happy with it oh my god finally but boom someone says here this makes no sense i know people that have covid twice actually a friend in berlin had them completely vaccinated and they recovered and got covid second time hope we don't get another lockdown as a result of this and another stupid policy that's true there's a good point there's a lot of stories happening at the moment with people who got the vaccine and unfortunately still contracted COVID. I think it's one of these weird anomalies that people haven't really figured out what the reason behind it is, how it happens, blah, blah, blah. We are working on a situation, but from what we know so far, from the information that's available, from all the leading scientists, the best way to prevent yourself from getting COVID and spreading it is to get a vaccine. Now, is it foolproof? Is it 100% um, protection? No. From what we've seen so far, it should be 100% protection, but it isn't. It's not like a one-stop cure or prevention aid. It just isn't. Cool, that's that's all right. But again, the only way to stop prevention, to stop you know widespread spread and to stop you from contracting it is to have the vaccine. And that's the only real way people or society or the world in general will get back to some semblance of normality, unfortunately. I just don't see any other routine out of this. You know, that's going to get us back to some sense of normality, whether it's just... And again, I, I would like to know what anti vaccine people think in that regard. Like, how will they approach it? If, if you're not for the vaccine, which is fine, and you don't want to do lockdowns, cool. How do you go about combating this virus? Or do they generally think that it's not real? Because it clearly is, right? There's people dying. There's people who are generally, you know, there's so many stories of somebody that was, oh, I used to train three days a week or five days a day or five times a day and I still contracted COVID and now I'm on the ventilator. Those stories exist. They're a little bit manipulative for the media because it seems like they're trying to stoke fear and division into the public and whatever. But let's take them at face value. There are many people out there getting sick, many people dying. That's true. So I would like to really, I really am curious to know from the empty vexers, like what would they would, what they would do? What's the approach here? Especially from people in Berlin, like in this kind of decision we've seen from the Berlin Club Commission. What's the alternative for this? open up allow people from different countries to come into your country without showing a vaccine passport to go into a club and get up to all sorts of you know nonsense that they get up to in to german club, in berlin clubs for the most part is that really a safe way to go about things i don't think so right it doesn't seem like the safest in my opinion and i would assume 
people have definitely seen who live there an uptick in tourism especially now that the world's been opening up slowly but surely if that's the case too there's definitely a lot more people coming there from other parts of the world the only way to really prevent you know them coming and spreading that nasty virus everywhere is to mandate people to just wear a mask sorry mandate people that they just have to get a vaccine in order to step in and then once they're in of course no mask and no capacity which is perfect because the last thing anyone wants is to be raving inside of same heads or something and you've got a mask on you i mean it just defeats the purpose of being in that kind of kooky sort of club we continue here we go on so vaccinate people equal indoor clubbing party which is obviously yes um we got here i don't know more german stuff is continue because vaccinated people don't transmit the virus this is so stupid only discrimination and segregation again i would love to know what this what the what the alternative solution is because it's all well and good saying those kind of things but what what do you do instead do you just hope and pray and tell everyone to go back and live their lives and hope things get better like there has to be some plan in place this other person here said the following i hope the clubs will be asking for negative rapid test um, results and entry even for vaccinated as we know that vaccinated can still carry the virus and are often asymptomatic it's so it's just so easy to get tested now so i hope the clubs will be responsible enough to enforce that but it's not really the club's responsibility and well i guess it is i guess every club should have their should be given the ability to um manage the door and entry the way that they need to be right so if their government says hey you, if it's no vaccine or no entry the, the door people should be able to say okay on top of that you also need to bring a pcr test right just to give us some added safety and make people feel a bit okay which is again i completely understand that makes a lot of sense um, another person here with the vaccine you also get several chips injected that's funny to pay you the bar one of the free cocaine at your favorite dealer cool yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah Berlin clubs are coming back um indoors hopefully this weekend um which is great if you're around those parts enjoy yourself i'm probably going to end up booking my flights there very very soon before the end of the year for sure do my regular one once a year visit that i always do sometimes when i'm cheeky i can fit in two or three i can go sometime beginning of the year sometime in the middle of the year to experience the summer because the summers there are beautiful and then of course the harsh winters because the flights are cheap and no one wants to go so definitely going to end up doing that but i reckon these this year the flights are going to be super expensive there probably won't be a lot of airbnbs around because a lot of people probably stayed you know the people that usually travel around they leave the airbnb so you can stay in them are probably going to go are probably not going to go elsewhere so that's going to be an interesting part of the story overall but yeah, looking forward to it, looking forward to it. Pick up everybody that lives over there and hope you guys can get back to dancing indoors very, very soon. What else we've got here? We've got this feature courtesy of Hypebeast where they're featuring the Cold War, Dr. Martin collaboration 1461. And I've got to say, they look incredible, incredible. Maybe one of the best um, recent collaborations I've seen with like a designer or like a brand and Dr. Martin's in a while, I have to be honest, maybe since the Rick Owens, which just come out recently, but you know what I mean, right? A lot of people, a lot of brands have kind of done collaborations with Dr. Martin's and for the most part, they've been fairly mediocre. They haven't necessarily, you know, um, changed anything no one's really gone out their way to purchase them but i think the way that sammy ross has put the shoe together the way it looks the fact that without even it being too loud it still kind of speaks to the code of a cold war and it sort of in my opinion represents um what does it represent it kind of represents where they're at as a brand now right it's the sort of um um living breathing embodiment of all the hard work that they've kind of done over the years the refinement in their vision the refinement in their craft in their palette in their taste level um in their ability to design to construct like it just feels perfect for me like i felt like that nike air force one the first one they did the strap obviously with the laces i thought that was a, a magnus opus that was one of those things that it's just hard to top in it right how genius that was especially when you consider how they used to you know dip dye some of the old air force ones for their first shows and the fact that he got a chance to make his own shoe and he made such a brilliant brilliant shoe that again spoke really well to the brand um that he's able to he's been able to cultivate over the years and you know i think somebody said it i forgot who but a cold war really is the uk version of like imperial mind you know you can definitely see a cold war going like 
to you know the sky's the limit with them in terms of what they want to do they could obviously double back down and you know maybe trim the fat and go a bit avant-garde and occupy that sort of like Dries Van Noten sort of you know area of things or they could go and just cash out and do like the Imperial Money thing where you still got the ability to just kind of talk to the fashion heads but also you're able to be sold in some of the biggest department stores around the world you have retail stores located all around the world too and you're just smashing it year on year because people come to you every season for a particular cut of a jacket a particular cut of a pen a particular cut of a bag because they just trust your vision they trust your craft work and i definitely see that with a cold war going forward but this dr martin 4061 is amazing it's such a great um sort of um what do you call it it's such a great way to um, elevate a shoe that in my opinion is a classic you know the Dr. Mines 4061 is a shoe you don't really mess with too tough similar to like again to an Air Force One um, but the way that they built on top of it and made it look their own is just superb it really is and this colorway is just banging you got this sort of like cementy granite looking block there on top you've got these you know embossed uh silver sterling silver sort of uh, you know fastens here around here um i think this is sort of what, what would you say would you say that's kind of embossed as well this bit here this all kind of protrudes you've got the nice kind of obviously motif here on the back of the heel and a zip right down the front with no laces whatsoever so you can just slip these on and keep it moving now the only thing i'd say about 1461 having worked in dr martin's and worn these shoes plenty of times they are feet killers um i'd hope maybe behind the scenes sam has been able to do something in terms of comfort and how they fit but if there's one thing i've learned about dr Myers over the years they're not just like comfortable easy van slippers that you just slide on and you just continue to go about you know go about your day there are shoes that you have to decide whether when how you're going to break them in or if you are going to break them in make sure you have a pair of slides or something in your bag that you can wear because sooner or later your heels will bleed your feet will get sore and it just won't be a pleasant experience from my own opinion but again maybe something's different with the designer shoes or the collaborations they put together maybe the leather's softer maybe they've increased some of the proportions they've changed the shaft you know little things that you could do to kind of um tweak um that will basically place the foot in different places and maybe not lead to so much uh blisters and whatnot but yeah these look incredible man really great they've even got the little tonal um coloring there on the back label right where it says like airwear usually where does it, what does it say there yeah exactly it's usually got the airwear here it's all leather as well oh two, the, the silver buttons out the back that's brilliant i love that i wonder if they i wonder if a cold war will end up implementing this sort of um we even call it branding but you know similar to what like a martin margella does with the stitching on the outside i wonder if this will be something that they kind of implement or they've already implemented in their collections overall whether you'll see this on the back of jumpers on the back of anoraks on the back of you know maybe on the back of the belt loop of a trouser or something i don't know but i love it and it looks like the sole has been somewhat um exaggerated too maybe it's like a double sole it looks like a little bit um again expertly done um, the fact that they've sort of it's better it's just one color block so you don't really see any idea what do you call it is it the welt right in terms of how it kind of is put together it's kind of it looks like a little bit of a similar salt like a Jaden, which you know if you know anything about um dr martin's you know it's one of the most popular shoes ever nowadays right everyone's kind of got a pair of Jadens, but these look amazing man Samuel Ross absolutely smashed these. I'm not going to lie. Um, I wonder if there's a little bit. It's good. There's going to be a little clothing collection, a clothing capsule collection with them, or if it's just a shoes. And I wonder also whether or not something like this. Obviously, he designed them ahead of time. I wonder if this design has kind of played a role in influencing the overall runway show and whether or not there are pieces in the general collection that you can purchase now that would go really well with these shoes i'm not too sure but either way amazing amazing shoe very well put together um the final product is fucking banging i respect these to sell out because they look beautiful you can't really go wrong with a pair of you know blue or sorry with a, with, a, with a pair of like concrete gray derby looking type shoes especially from dr martins because you know even though they might be uncomfortable they're going to be bulletproof so let's read the quickly read some of the blurb here courtesy of hypebeast it says collaborations appear to be more desired when it comes to the bootload um 
of footwear launches that occupy sorry that occur every month and this is certainly isn't an area where dr martins is lacking this season we've seen the uk imprint take on a wide variety of collaborations and partnerships with the likes of jow and atmos soy um, have you pronounced that name and the cold war for the new 1461 graphite collaboration the second um occasion that these brands have linked together the first being the june 20 to july 2020 with a stark black 1460 um this like this inaugural team up this newest offering focuses on functionality again i prefer this 1461 as again even though i'm a big fan of black boots and i have way too many in my collection um there's something about being able to buy a pair of these in their particular color and having to figure out where it kind of works and outfits and just have something different in your wardrobe overall that definitely is something that i would kind of vibe with so for sure it says like it's an inaugural team up this newest offering focuses on functionality up move there and minimalism the low slung boot comes prepared with a smooth leather upper that are flooded with the graphite hues the overlays have been slightly modified with the original aesthetic and arrive with a sharper cuts along the midfoot and heel to provide a more technical inspired look that aligns with the cold war aesthetic additionally Stanley Rose decided to follow the same cadence as the aforementioned 4060 collab by stripping away laces and certain zippered closures down the throat and adding a debossed acw hit on the lateral flow down below the semi chunky sole units contrast with an all black exterior yeah it is it's not really double sold it's like uh you know a quarter sold right there's definitely an extra sort of mm, bump put on there they kind of look similar on the sole to like the made in england 1461s they have a little bit of a chunkier silhouette a chunkier outsole sorry maybe that's where they're sort of taking inspiration from some of those made in england 4061 i knew i should have purchased more of those when i was working there but you know whatever we move we move down below the this um, release is due of september 2nd so that's going to be tomorrow um obviously it being september 1st today so if you're a fan of these and you're a fan of what cold will do definitely go check them out because this is definitely one of the better collaborations i've seen in recent years and then uh, if collaborations weren't enough and you didn't get enough about that and um, what else i've got to show you there are these Coach of high beast john teases up and coming new balance 990 v4 collaboration in navy now to me i uh, hear it looks a black to me but maybe it is navy but this is definitely one of the heads because if i'm not mistaken this pair already exists in this particular sort of not obviously with the material choices and whatnot because it looks like you might have done some hits of new buck or suede on the eye stays and some of the mud guards here so that they give that kind of nice different texture and color when they've kind of been scuffed a little bit right even though they're all black they kind of end up looking far more interesting once you worn them than a regular pair that you'd get a gr pair but it does need to be said that you can purchase a fairly you know um you know a fairly comparable shoe that already exists in new balances lineup without the you know the uh, addition of the branding obviously from John the Justin Saunders and his little studio if you want to but there definitely is something about supporting people that you think are cool and have great taste where you would maybe you know put to one side your rational sensible mind and say you know what even though I could purchase these shoes as a GR tomorrow on Amazon for $140 I'm good I'd much rather purchase these pairs which are going to be super limited they're going to sell out in seconds for $160 or $80 because I love what Justin Swan is doing I'm a fan of Jam the website itself you know like I'm sure people do that but this is one for this is definitely one of those head scratches you're like hmm but this is also for me represents what i used to love about sneaker collaborations back in the day or sneaker culture in general back in the day it was far more interesting people would take these kind of chances right they wouldn't just go and get have the opportunity to you know be able to make their own color of a shoe and just go crazy and turn it into like a what the dunk version right of whatever shoe it is no they would actually go there and make something you know tasteful something true to who they are something they think that could be timeless right without the need of bells and whistles which is hard i would imagine especially back in the day when i was collecting shoes and there was a small period where everyone was obsessed with like pony hair and all this sort of nonsense right um it can be tempted to kind of adopt those materials and approaches to the shoe that you make but sometimes i feel like having restraint and holding back 
and you know being very subtle about how you present um or you do collaborations it definitely goes a long way which is why i'm probably always been and have been um the biggest you know hiroshi fujiwara fanboy that exists where i've got tons of vintage japanese magazines here with a lot of his street style shots and books of his and whatnot right big fan of what he does obviously with fragment design and one of the reasons why is because he's able to kind of take he's kind of maybe the forefather of you know virgil abloh's approach to design where it's like a three percent change right um and i think he takes that obviously and does it with his collaborations where most of his nike collaborations look like I won't say look like GRs, but it look like a shoe that Nike could have designed in house. He doesn't go crazy. He always kind of is very tasteful. You take like a model that doesn't really get a lot of shine and give it a bigger platform. You know, slap his Thunder Strike symbol on the side of it, Bob's Granny, you know, whatever, and keep it moving. You see it happening with the dunks that he's got at the moment, right? They're fairly, they look fairly crap, in my, my opinion. I like the colorway, but the uh, the quality of the materials on that dunk specifically look terrible. I think it's a Beijing and it's a number, maybe a Tokyo one, but they just don't look that great. And it doesn't matter because obviously <coughs> they got, they got her Roshi Fujiwara to do that collaboration because they wanted him to, you know, hype up the dunks and maybe, you know, be the reason why a few other people, a few more people who are still on the fence as I am, maybe decide to go and buy the dunks, but they're just not good. They look terrible quality. They look like the kind of dunks you would purchase, unfortunately, in places like JD and Foot Locker because that's where the GRs are sent. And then all the limited edition shoes that you purchase from like a sneaker and stuff will be far better quality. But the quality I saw of those shoes was just not good. But that aside, Hoshi Fujiwara is a real genius at that approach um, in the way he does collaborations, which is why I think most of his shoes, for the most part, with the exception of maybe some of those, what are those ones I had in 1948? They were like a patent um, black sort of all court right maybe it's an all core or women or whatever it is with a little mud guard in the front it was really uncomfortable to wear and just you know looked a bit gaudy so with the exception of those kind of black pattern joints back in the day his collaborations are great I mean, there's a collaboration that still hasn't come out yet that i'm still eagerly anticipating to drop which i think he wore at some panel discussion with like you know that flipping you know melon head jeff staple who you know Let's say about that that dim wit the better. But I remember him being on stage at that show and showing off a pair of these Air Force One mids that were, you know, they had a Velcro strap on them and they looked incredible, like really, really good. Um, I'm not sure when they'll ever come out, if ever, but they looked really amazing. And that's again a great way to sort of uplift a very, you know, classic colorway or a classic model of a shoe in general, um, without going too crazy. Just you know, got an off, off an Air Force One mid. Uh, you know, a shoe that's very popular with most stickers or people in general. And instead of just having um, it with laces and the strap, obviously, in the midfoot, he just turned it into like a Velcro trainer with, I think, three straps across it um, from the top to the bottom. And it looks banging. And um, we haven't really seen any update from that since then. But again, I think Jound is basically the, it feels like the heir apparent, which is weird, isn't it? Considering he's like Canadian and his things are a little bit more earthy in terms of how he does it right he's aesthetic he's his codes and he's you know his palettes are a lot more earthy and maybe optimistic than what um Hiroshi Fujiwara does but again I'm a big fan of these new balances no real uh, let's see what the um info says regarding the release date itself it says John's first type producing for let's know it's back to office too much there uh, based off the one photo of these that were posted in John's IG we can see that the kicks will adhere to a two-tone motif the breathable mesh underlays um, along with the buttery suede overlays will work together and appear with identical navy skin white hints and solid black sprinkle on the laces interior liners said um, side end logos toe box overlay sorry midsoles and american flags affixed on the tongues interesting america oh because they're made in the u.s i'm assuming right because who took over the made in u.s bit in the new balance was it the it was the guy from uh ami leondor right i'm pretty sure so if that's the case then maybe um this collaboration makes a lot of sense and maybe again the you know a fiction of the united states flag on the depend again when you consider the guy's canadian or well, I think the studio itself is based in Canada itself as well. It's a bit interesting, but you know, it says here release dates, release details sorry, are still unknown, but you can check these to launch sometime during the fall winter 2021. So sometime soon, you'll see a pair of these Jound New Balance 990 Vs V4. Sorry, if you haven't got your order and you're probably not going to get them. It is what it is. The game is the game, and we keep it moving. 
What else do we have here? We talked about that. Talked, yeah, let's talk about Donda. So this is courtesy of the Washington Post, right? I think as well, this is a conversation I've heard being spoken in other places. I think I heard them mention it a little bit on the How Long Gone podcast. And people seem to be really irate. And again, I got some really stern comments about people saying that I didn't have any good taste in music and I didn't know what good music was and I was a fanboy and all this stuff. It's just like, I'm not really a fanboy. I'm pretty objective when it comes to Kanye. I love what he does in terms of how he approaches, you know, his life. He basically lives his life as a... Um, real life performance piece right which is amazing to see as an artist as a wannabe artist as somebody that's striving to obviously get to that sort of level and do my own thing it's great to see somebody as rich and famous as him still acting the way that he does right there is no kind of i'm gonna say growing up but that he hasn't necessarily you know turned into just professional guy just sits in his studio and cranks out you know shoes and designs and whatever he's still engaging with people in society the way that he was prior and i think it's quite admirable in my personal opinion now the music for me personally has been diabolical ever since what i don't know saint pablo or whatever right is that saint pablo first yeah saint pablo yay um kitty girls was okay there were good parts in it i think the collaborations i think the fact that kanye and kid cuddy were on one mixtape album thing was a lot more impressive and maybe brought out the best in both of them as opposed to the, the tracks being strong strong right it's not real a lot of replay value in the album at all but you know if someone said kissy girls are performing live somewhere i'd go see them instantly right because you know they're two of the better performers when it comes to hip-hop in kid cuddy and kanye west but the music hasn't been great let's just say that the music hasn't been great saint pablo was terrible i think a lot of people can't guess off that because of the great merch they designed for it everyone going to wyoming people wearing the, the merch or the jumper picture of kanye wearing it like you know, like a little side bag patch or thing um all the hangers on breading people posting pictures of themselves there to kind of show off and show everybody that you know they got selected all this nonsense i think played into the fact that people like the album a lot but i didn't really like it i thought it was terrible personally and then of course yay the sort of introspective they tried to lock me into mental institution album was just nah not for me whatsoever i thought music it was just terrible and if i'm honest again i remember saying at the time that maybe maybe he's lost it musically he's just not the guy anymore and then for him to come back in this fashion and deliver probably again a seminal gospel album right in terms of its ability to uh, sit in that sort of category without it looking forced is amazing he really did a great job and um you could definitely tell he's a lot more comfortable in his own skin as being a born again christian wherever he would kind of describe himself and i think it reflects a lot in the music i think the music sounds great i think the lyrics are amazing too Kanye, guys who's writing for him, sounds much better rapping than he did on Pablo and Ye. So that's brilliant to see. And maybe just uh, him knowing in the back of his head that Drake might be dropping soon and they've got this ongoing beef. Maybe that also added and spurred him on to kind of come hard, isn't it? Because I think he recorded a couple of verses. I think he might have recorded a five year foreign verse on the al finished album, which is understandable. But, you know, all in all, I think the album's good. Um, I'm not saying it's the, it's, again, it's the greatest album in the world, but I still think in terms of Kanye's previous output, we have to be honest and just say Donda is definitely up there with My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. It might not be better than it, cool, but it's definitely some of his best work since My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. If you kind of ignore Kids, he goes, um, you know, Pablo and Ye. If we do ignore those albums, for sure Donda is the next one. No one can deny it. It might be just you know yeah, it definitely is the next one let's not even go down that catalogue thing it is the next one so it's a courtesy of Washington Post they don't seem to think it so and they said Kanye West is trolling us from the wheel, <laughs> from the void it says contrary to his trolley rollout this new horse a uh, deep warmer of an album that Kanye West dropped early Sunday morning it doesn't qualify as edgy no matter how old anyone wishes it to be as listeners we're fixed it we're flexibly drawn to that imagery edge so that imaginary edge the pre the precipice what, what what am I talking about the precipice where artists flirt with unknown while keeping their feet planted in concert in consensus blah why can't I read it loud I don't know when it's going let's skip West made great era defining music on this blah on that bluff but now after years of stylistic differing and mega footsie it's clear that this guy has stumbled over the edge and drifted into a dead zone of aesthetic and inertia his music comes um, contains only one unpopped kernel of cosmic truth the word void is boring so i think i've not seen one article or one review of kanye's donda album that has not been a fan of the album who hasn't mentioned maga or trump or something not one and it's interesting right because 
why should that matter who he likes or who he supports as president? Because, again, like I said, it's such a weird place in America because it's clear that some people in that country love Donald Trump. Not a lot of them, but I'm sure there's a, there's a sizable amount of people who also went out and voted for the guy, which obviously led to him being the White House in the first place. Of course, he couldn't sustain that. And, you know, that's a story for another day in terms of did he sustain it or did he get, you know, did he get the old chop suey behind the scenes? But regardless, I don't see why it's such a big offense to say that you're a fan of the guy, or not a fan of the guy that you like him as president. For all these flaws and his shortcomings, which I'm sure a lot of those people will know and were able to be to detail themselves, they've still come to a somewhat sober decision and thought, you know what, even though I know all these bad things about this guy and I've received this message and that whatever, I'm still going to go forward and be his fan and still going to go forward and pay for his show. I'm still going to go forward and listen to the album for however many flipping hours people listen to the album. I think that goes a long way to show not so the power, but just in general. So maybe what influence he actually really has on the kids if they're willing to kind of let that shit go. But again, I understand because Trump's presidency was a madness, right? He divided a lot of people, divided families. People, um, I imagine people's families are still probably not talking to each other after all that nonsense. So maybe it's somewhat understandable that that sort of like residual effects of, you know, Trump being around and all the non-stop kind of 24-hour footage of what's Kanye's next breakdown going to be and seeing Kim obviously destroy all that stuff it didn't really help it didn't help but again mentioning that in a movie music review just seems insane because you're meant to be judging the music but you know hey the album Donda it says here is named after Kanye West's late mother and perhaps to the rapper's credit he said on Sunday afternoon that his label shipped it off to a streaming service before he was complete this comes after weeks of hype 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 or hyper hype sorry though with the West um, hosting ticketed listening parties at football stadiums in Atlanta and Chicago most recent of his um, including guest appearance at Marilyn Manson who has been accused of numerous women of sexual assault and the baby who staged banter at the Miami's Rolling Loud Festival in July was widely condemned as homophobic as hate to be which is true don't get me wrong what the baby and said wasn't the greatest but to sit there and try and equate what the baby said with what Marilyn Manson has been equated with is just insane but unfortunately in this sort of like bullshit not making sense world for whatever reason the you know cancel culture brigade right the cancel culture whole monitors would lead you believe that somehow calling somebody a bad word or offending them or maybe using your words to kind of strip them of their being and return them to who they actually actually who they actually are is somewhat paramount to violence which would then again send you to you know detention which is just insane really insane because what they're doing is obviously stalling and hoping whatever injunction they put forward to send to the judge uh, they kind of go through you know the standard stuff but I don't know I don't know I don't know I just think it's insane this whole thing I just think it's wild but again Kanye did this he put Marilyn Manson and baby on the album I'm sure he knew what the repercussions will be but I just don't see what this cancer culture thing with this means like okay the baby said something stupid like, but what's the road for redemption how, m how many more times are we going to keep getting reminded of his homophobic slurs on the stage and his you know, somewhat twisted and distorted perspective of the world how are we ever going to forget that we're not and you know he's probably going to make people behind the scenes and get that sorted and get some rehabilitated and it'll be fine at the end of the day but the Marilyn Manson one is still the one that's scratching my head because like I said from what account that I read which I'm, I think was posted on Los Angeles Times he's being accused of like the R word you know what I mean people are not people aren't happy with him whatsoever the women in his life are basically saying that he's a monster and they're willing to go to court to confess to such a thing so for Kanye to go out there again to equate for Kanye to start to, to equate the baby with Marilyn Manson is quite insane but also a very Kanye West type of thing to do right to be inviting Marilyn Manson and the baby to the same studio and racking them the music up until you know 120 wherever it's not on in the hopes that your guys will fill the track which they obviously did he continues here says maybe West thinks it's uninviting Jesus as edgelord he's uh, he's uninviting edgelord cosplay by inviting these sinners to walk in his dim light but Dunder which features came from both the baby and Manson is an album about forgiving is an album about forgiving so much about forgets forgetness your ears won't be able to detect Manson's contribution to the jail too yes you can you can hear him you can hear him on the what is it um on whatever the 
not ad lib it's sort of like the, the 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 layer you put on top of a chorus right moving in 3d well, that kind of like echoey type thing you hear um you hear uh Marilyn manson pretty clear and he sounds again he sounds incredible you'd have to say the baby has maybe one of the best verses on the album maybe second only to five year foreign's verse off the grid but all these things people purposely try to ignore and put their blinkers on because you know Kanye West dared to put on a red hat like i don't know i don't know who cares it's just like America's a strange place like that. It continues, it says, earlier in the track list, in hopes of wiping any memories of West um, toward the allegiance to Donald Trump, Jay-Z appears to, to, with a mop, it says, told him to stop all that red cap, we going home, then to help seal the rhyme, Jay hints, gets himself off the hook, by capitalizing this mess too, and says, not me with all these sins, casting stones. It continues, it says, all oh, pretty gross. You're totally uninspiring, ultimately not even interesting enough to halfway be interesting. Bruv, I don't know how people can listen to this album and not think it's interesting. West makes no prop- no new propositions here, sonically or lyrically. He's back in tracks either pantomime the only much sense of the last great album. Jesus is the last great album. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Jesus is really good. I think Jesus is super timeless and definitely ahead of his time. I think if you go and listen to Jesus now, it sounds like nothing that's out now still to this day. Um, it would you definitely would feel like it would do a lot better though this year or around this era of music. Um, but yeah, he was definitely on something when he made Jesus. Um, the Jesus King album, of course, that was the color, that was most of the compilation with the Sunday service, which I thought was fairly decent. It, it continues here says this means more Christian youth goth, youth group got poetry contest submission. It's hard to be an angel when you're surrounded by demons. More um. It, What's that thing called? Elept, el- elliptical, elliptical confessions of his sickness. I don't do rehearsals. I don't do commercials because they're too commercial, and more forced levity that only feels, or that only that almost feels fun. It says, "If I hit you with a WYD, the of course, you want more. Dunder has more, and you wretch your soul." At nearly two hours, this is the long ride of an empty gas tank. Let's not waste any more of our precious lives talking about it here bruv honestly i think a lot of this just has to do with him calling trump his dad man and putting on that hat i don't think people would be this harsh on the Kanye west album if that wasn't the case because like i said he generally does make good music you can't deny that this guy doesn't make objectively good music because you're just lying um he does he makes good music is what it is people just don't want to admit it because you know again admitting it would be you kind of publicly you know um you publicly sort of admitting your guilt, I guess, in that regard. Does that make sense? Admitting your guilt? Yeah, that's kind of what it means. So I get it. But come on, man. This kind of, you know, um, ign- collective ignoring that people are doing in the industry just seems a bit weird and forced, in my opinion, personally. Again, but what do I know? What do I know? I think that might be it, you know. How many t- how many video how many minutes have I recorded already here? Yeah, an hour. That's pretty much that's pretty much alright. Whoops, move that. It's pretty much alright. Um one hour the actual show episode number four ninety. Thank you so much for tuning in. Been a pleasure to have your company. If it's your first time, make sure you snap that like button, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below on YouTube. And of course, subscribe and share the show via the podcast app. That'd be greatly appreciated. And of course, leave me a five star review if you've got any time. I would appreciate that too. And support via Patreon. You can find the links in my show notes description. You get a Patreon episode at the end of this week available for the equivalent of one pound or one dollar. You get access to my entire patreon so don't delay get on there today but until then friends take care be safe and i'll see you guys again very very soon peace